Welcome back. Another knife painting coming up here. I'll explain. Uh, that was that's from the Sky Road in Galway, County Galway, Ireland. Like the other one, or well, the other two. I've done this in watercolour, but it was a bit of a dead laugh, so I've scrapped the video. Um, but I haven't scrapped the piece of paper. There it is. I'm going to do a knife painting of that. I'll try to. Um, there's enough of it showing through so I don't have to do any drawing but there's a lot of detail but I'm going to have to totally simplify that and just put a, a, a bit of a, a beach there but all that's a shingle beach we'll, uh, we'll through a sandy beach but make it look try and make it look a bit shingly the rocks cry out for a knife and we've got this background with this blue behind the nearer peninsula whatever that is there I've never been there so I don't know but I thank uh, Matthew and Molly for or Matthew from Belgium for sending me the, these photographs in Dropbox it's very kind of them so all I have to do is just mention them no copyright infringement because from the horse's mouth the, the video of all these is on YouTube Uh, Matthew is one of my much valued subscribers. So here we are. I've, I've gessoed this with that plaster of Paris and uh, and the varnish diluted so that it flows quite well. It's a, a good idea if you're working on watercolour paper is to is to put a coat of varnish or acrylic, thin acrylic medium on the other side as well. And that will help to seal the paper so make it waterproof and it, it should stay flat I hope so so it's like a piece of canvas now it's got a lovely tooth on it which is what we need for the painting with the more solid medium medias mediums uh, right I'll show you my palette again now uh, right way down because it's also my so there is if I just come out a little bit there it is this is a piece of a wardrobe, wardrobe. I've had it for donkey's years. And it's got so much linseed oil and paint on it. It's got a lovely pattern on it. It's a little bit lumpy now, but it's much used, much loved. And it goes on my studio easel. But to save me keep putting up one easel, taking another one down, I'm, I'm working on the box easel. And it's very suitable for this. I've, I've just cut a couple of notches here and there with a saw so that it pushes underneath the lid and and is either side of the, the hinges and it, it's nice and solid it won't tip now and it won't move that way so I am very happy about that right okay let's come up again to the business area come up to there zoom get it as big as we can move that right uh, That's about it. Right, first first of all, you need a lot of paper. Oops, for this. So I'll tear some off and just put it up on my feet. And I've mixed up, the white I've mixed up is an uh, alkyd resin, resin uh, called uh, Griffin. It's a Winsor Wins & Newton. Artist quality. Uh, paint that's fast drying. I've mixed it with a with a, a lump of the ordinary Winton student quality white to bulk it out. And the colours I've I've got here are uh, cadmium red, medium, uh, ultramarine blue, uh, burnt umber, pay, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, black, and uh, and oh dear my, these tubes of paint are disintegrating the uh one of the tubes aren't they're so old it's the oh i might have excuse me i might have a, a partially used tube over here oh, yeah, I had. right okay because I'm, I'm mostly doing watercolor painting and mixing with acrylics which i like but i must say that using 
a knife is, is easily my favourite way of painting. But like all things, it can go to mud and you can get, get lost in all this paint. This is my, my knife, I've, I've got loads of these, but these are the two I, I use for painting, the others for, uh, for ladling on the plaster of Paris, but mostly that one. I've had it years. When, when they, they get a bit uh, of paint stuck to the, other, to, to the base of it, just use a craft knife and just scrape it off. So it's nice and flat and smooth again. There we are. That's it. That's all we need to do. Right, now, good practice with, uh, well, uh, from my experience, is work from the top down. That way you're not working over wet paint. If you start here, you're you are you can get your fingers in it all. So from the picture we've got a we've got a nice sunny sky. So I'm just put a put a bit of a nice bit of blue and white, so a lot of white in there. They're fairly well mixed, but you don't if you don't it'll be streaky, you don't really want it streaky, but then again, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of variation in, in each uh, knife stroke. So, so we've got some coming down here. So, coming all the way across there. Lighter as you get to the, to the horizon. It's such a natural way of painting. It's the only thing that would be better than this would be painting your fingers because this is so lovely. Now we, I'm going to put a touch of lemon yellow in, in that mix now because as you come to the horizon, you you do see a bit of. Bit of green, or at least um, the atmosphere changes, doesn't it? It gets lighter and more lighter greeny blues come into the near the horizon. You hear that lovely scrape. I like that. Uh, there's a bit of red in now. Come on the other side. These are the clouds over. Oh wait, not in. I've had quite a bit of experience with knife painting, but not over the last 18, 19 months that I've been doing these uh, for YouTube. So I'm pretty familiar with knocking up the similar tone of paint because you, easy, you, you don't knock up enough to start with and you have to redo it and then you, you get a bit angry because you can't because it all goes wrong and then you have to do the whole lot of thing. <coughs> now that is our basic uh, colour. So I'm going to mix some red in with that. Too much. Because so I want to put the uh, the light clouds in and I want it to go a slightly purple. There's a lot of work to be done in the sea, just cover it's a huge amount of stuff to to recover so thousands of acres uh, but we'll find a way I'll come down to the horizon a bit more white I'll put some white on the on the clouds I'll put a bit of colour in as well okay let's just have a look well I've a test log here
Slow down the noise. Oh, I've got hold that. See how quickly you can do this. I'm trying to keep away from, from the edge. Now we want some, some really nice light. So for that I'm going to use a touch of red. Just a touch. And a touch of lemon yellow. Plenty of white. I just want a nice, a nice cloud colour colour. So we went white. Well, off white, should I say? And we've got loads of these clouds. It's like a sunny blue sky with lots of broken white clouds or well, off white clouds. That's just. You have to use your imagination as well with all this. But there's plenty of scope for everything with this type of painting. It's so exciting, especially when you pull it pull one off. It's uh, very, very exciting. Have a look at Catherine Williams, the Welsh painter. Greatest painter, I've been my world, one of my all time favourites. My, my work over many years has been fitting carpets, and I've been in some wonderful homes in London. And I've seen Catherine Williams painting in some jobs. People who can afford to, could afford to buy them. He's in the National Portrait Gallery as well, with one of his uh, portraits of one of the local farmers in North Wales. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's, I hope it's a fabulous bit of work. I just, it just makes me want to cry just looking at it. It's just such a beautiful, simple statement. Right, let's just put some low, low ones down here. Use it all up. Just breaking up that horizon. That's, that's about what was there, really. Um, okay. The clouds probably a little bit dark, but there's not much I can do about it, I'm going to go over with a bit of a, another slightly lighter version. So we've got plenty of colour in the sky now. Might be a bit too fussy. Okay, let that go. Now we're going to put in the, the blue background, the distant, very distant hills. So that, this will be a, a darker version of the sky. Shaping those hills, talking to myself. Okay. 
who covered us with that, the base of that, that arm. Right, and that'll do for that background. Now, in front of that, we've I can just just knock off some of that. Some of that colour I can use in the sea. Right, now we've got some lemon yellow mixed in with that sky colour. Can't waste the paint. So it's here we've got this bit of light catching for more from the sun. So I'm going to just to emphasize that I think. Then we've got the sun's gone in and we've got a good bit of burnt sienna now with that. Bit of blue. And we'll gently just put this in. all the way across. I'm guessing this there's no very good um, photograph from the the DIY one that I got from Boots. I would be better using the computer image, it's much clearer. But that's uploading a previous watercolour. So right now that that's okay, we could probably put a little bit of that, that yellow in okay. Just, just get rid of that detail there. Okay, we can. <coughs> <coughs> I think this is coming up from the left, and it stops. It stops there. <coughs> but I'm not sure. If I'm, I don't think that is there, but anyway. Another bit of paper. Let's not wipe my fingers because it's very messy, job this. So I keep my jeans clean. Right, so that's going to be our horizon there. So let's just take some spare paint of that. Right, now we're going to go and do, just scrape off that. I'm going to do some rocks now, get these in. Right, rocks. So we've got the, the top of those rocks are green, so a load of green. So for that green, black, a bit of black, not much. Add the black to the light, otherwise it will ends up dark. In other words, put a wedge of I put a wedge of yellow down, and then I put a bit of black into it. If you do it the other way round, it'll stay black, or well, sort of. Now let's just put a bit of blue in there as well. I think just make it a bit darker. More blue, more black, a bit of shadow in there. A 
And you can warm it up with a bit of sienna, burnt sienna that is. Now we've got some yellow ochre there now. Looks a bit of burnt umber there I think. Now we've got to get some really good darks now. Burnt sienna and blue and a bit of green. So we'll, I'll raise that up there, that's probably a bit low. Um, Only going from watercolour with a card to doing all this, and that sort of comes up here. Mm. Look at the starter. All very delicate this is. Very tricky. And we want some grey. Grey blue. It's going to work. No, I'll put a bit of black in. Uh, no, it's whiter than that. More sienna, sienna in it. white bits there, I don't know what they're doing. And we've got lots of ochres in here as well. And lots of darker, darker bits in here. So some of that darker ochre. And we've got a bit there now dark. Sort of darkish greeny. I'm 
put some yellow ochre in there. Not quite got that right there. I'll go into that with the blue with the sea. There's a break there. Now some darker. down there a little bit and goes up there. Probably off the evil day when I have to do the uh, the sea. Get these starters. So we're not painting with a brush, we can, it's a to totally different approach. Alright, does that look rocky? I've got to put some sea some in, in here, so I'll just take off some, just thin it down a bit. Let's get this a bit more rocky there. There are some other rocks here and there, but okay. I just wonder if my rocks are a bit too small. Got a whacking great bit of beach here, but anyway, we won't worry too much. might be that the actual format of the photograph, 8 inches by 6 inches, doesn't quite translate to 15 inches by 11. It would be far out though, would it? Anyway, um, they're probably not big enough. But that's, I'm going to let that go. <coughs> right, now we want to do this blue sky. So let's have a clear up. Clear the decks. So I want the sea colour, but don't want it tainted by anything else. Which is always a problem with your painting with a map. Oh, that's my, my sea area. Okay, <coughs> load of white, loads and loads of white. And we've got a darker blue, so I'm not sure what will make my darker blues other than a bit of a bit of burnt umber. I'll just show you me my palette. You can have a look at that for a second. That's still too too light. Put some more of that in, burnt umber, a little bit. The burnt umber takes a sting out of the blue, makes it a dark blue, or a darker blue. As long as it's darker than the than the sky, sky blue. But it's it's not such a a rich. Yeah, that's it. I don't need an approximate painter after all.
put it down there. Please. There was a very popular American lady called Nancy Kaminsky. I used to love watching her on telly when I was a lad. Or well, when I was a youth. <coughs> no, I was older than that, but she's loved I've got one of her books. I think everybody, every artist has got one of her books. Now I've got to get round there without disturbing anything. Now this is only a demonstration, you can't expect me to do studio quality all the time. It's Whoops. I have to still to that. Need a steady hand. I tell you, when you paint down to something that like I'm doing here, provided you don't go out too much over the edge, you get a, quite an impact. Rather than paint up into it, we're painting down into the landscape. So, so you do trees. If you, I'm only talking about oils or acrylics that paint down to your trees rather than painting like painting the sky first then putting the trees over the sky it has less impact than if you do your trees first and then paint the sky down to the trees All right let's come down there then we've got different colors in here don't smooth it out too much if you do this I can put uh, some to the other areas of light in here just to break up the monotony. There we go. Let's work it on. I'm going, as I come into the uh, into this area, I'm going to. Uh, I crumbs that piece was really down there. I thought it was quite big. Watch here. I'm going to put some other colours in to reflect the landscape above the water. Now we're we'll to the uh, direction of these ripples now, we're good more like that. And it's all sweeping round. Get some of that um, burnt umber in there. Dark up burnt umber. We've also got to keep it as well. I need to keep my knife clean so I don't change all this here. I'm going to put some other colours in that 
some some she had a lot of ochres. You couldn't do this with acrylic very easily because it would dry too quickly. more detail in, in the brush strokes here. We should be able to darken that a bit. So let's there. Alright, okay. Note it, very little detail up there. Let's put in some sort of bluish ochre colours in there now. some sand under there. Or... Uh, reflecting the uh... nice okay that's looking right. <coughs> you can see how, how totally absorbed you can get in something like this. Right, um, I think I'm going to bring in the water around a bit more there. Right, let's just Less of a beach to worry about there. Just trying to show these ripples in here by modelling rather than painting. That'll do. Push out that. So we've got some of that ochre colour there now in that, on the foreshore. Well, sorry, on the tide lines. Mixed in with the blue. Bit of blending there. Right, oh, some darker oak amber in there. When you mix burnt umber with the, with um, white, you get a lovely, oh, warm sandy colour, really, really nice. But 
you just could do the bit off white rather than the light umber, if you know what I mean. Okay, so that's. I'm just trying to show the, sh the reflection of, or the loose reflections in here, not too successfully. Reflect a little bit of this here, just there. Right, okay. That will do. Now we've got some green. A nice green in here. This is sort of seaweedy on the on the shore here. Blue, I'll mix blue with it rather than black with the seaweed. Rough here. So I've got through a bag full of uh, tissue. But this tissue I just buy from the, from the cheap shops. Makes me a bit of a bit of blue under that. a bit of black in there. I think. Why not pony these guys? Right, okay. Right, okay. And now we come in with the, the white and the umber. Where's my white? Uh, The thing about knife painting, you can use an awful lot and it all goes to waste. You can, I'll show you if I end so much is left in the palette, but you can't be stingy with this sort of painting. So I use the student qualities. <coughs> They're more than adequate. Right, let's get in with our, our nice light beach. Lighter than that, a bit of umber. When I put my mount onto a photograph or to show it to you, it's going to uh, I have to be careful when I use the mount for the watercolours. I'll put some detail on that. Right, now we've got some darker bits of pebble and rubble, rubble on the shore here, especially all around this area here, so let's just, just dab and the brush, the knife. of the tide, high tide mark. And then just pebbly. Right, okay. 
Right, that's about all I really can do with that. Uh, I need to delineate or separate there, but I might could do that just to show it as dark. So it's coming around here. There was more of a separation there with the uh, with the blue. Right, a bit better. And we'll I think it came up here a little bit more. Not in the photograph, but just a little bit. Uh, well, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to sign it. I don't know how you sign it really. I'm going to just, I'll sign it with the end of a brush. Right, that's all I can do there. Right, we'll uh, put it in now, but I've got to just stick the top here. I'm going to need some new bit of tape. That's all I'm doing today. <coughs> going out later to see my, my mate, who's a professional flamenco guitar player, Ron. No Spanish name. He's absolutely brilliant. We play together, he, he helps me. It's just a whole hobby for me. Uh, there's a bit of a rock there, but I'm not going to put it in. Uh, I just, what I want to do is just use a bit of tissue and just wipe the edges of this, of this here. Right, okay, let's put the uh, mount on. Ah, yeah, not enough really. But there it is. So that's uh, a bit of go away from the Sky Road, or Sky Road, I think it's what it's called. I googled it. So, another knife painting. The sky is probably a little bit fussy, but then when you look at the photograph, it was quite a fussy sky. It was, with a knife, I can't be as gentle as that. Well, there's my, my version of it. Can you see that? Oh, ah, no! I forgot to zoom you up, didn't I? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, it's too late now. So I just have to explain what, I did, what I've done again. I, I did more or less a flat blue here, and I just put some colours that were sh trying to give an impression that the the sand is showing through the uh, through the, the surface of the sea with some reflection of this. All this was done, so you didn't miss that. I just put this in here. Oh no! I'll go to cut my throat again because that is unforgivable. I do apologise. So I've shown a bit of um, seaweed here. Well, let's, let's show it a bit darker then. Show some darker seaweed in there. Then a bit of shadow. Okay, so that's, that's the high tide. The, the beach here is just a very light uh, burnt umber, which is quite a convincing colour really for, for beaches rather than yellow ochre or raw sienna but you can you can mix um well you can put shadow footprints and all sorts of stuff on it 
But anyway, that's the best I can do. I'm, pretty, I'm really sorry that you missed the last five minutes of that. Because I was showing you the mixing up of this uh, sea colour. But I don't think you missed very much. These are the ripples. Well, maybe they Let's see if I can uh, just make them look a little less obvious. Let's just take some of the... Because they, they hardly show. Right, that's it, that, that, that'll do. I'll get loads of unlikes now. Right, okay, uh, I'll zoom in, then you can have a little look. Just a few rocks going, sticking out. There's that promontory. Just want to focus in. Start for the shows with the sky. I think looks quite okay on on the screen. It was a sunny day with all these lovely little clouds going over. Now that is the distant. They are the distant hills, and I think I probably went over a bit too far there. I went out into the sea, almost to America. Whoops! I come down to the beach, to the bottom of this. Now we go right down to the to the bit you missed. Sorry, the, the, the camera is a bit jerky. It's on my little tripod. So that's it. Let's put it. I'll put it in a mount. Uh, zoom out. They always look better in a mount. all over the back of it lot. But hey ho, there we are. Go away. I probably could do a bit of green on there. Let's just break it, put a bit of detail on it. Not that much. Is uh, hanging day. Ah, oh, that'll do. <coughs> well, thanks for watching. At least you watched most of it. Let's just zoom out. To, that's better. So there we are with a bit of a mount around it. Quite an attractive little painting, I think. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.